This is Bumper to Bumper, the car show. Drive in anxious and cruise out confident. With the best automotive information for your vehicle. And now your hosts, Matt Allen and Dave Riccio. Well, good morning, everyone, and welcome to Bumper to Bumper Radio. I am Dave Riccio, here along with my good friend Matt Allen, and together we are your KTR Car Guys. Heard every Saturday from 11 to noon. Here at Bumper to Bumper Radio, our job is to help you, the motoring public, have a better overall car experience. If you got car questions, we've got car answers, so we encourage you to give us a call at 602-277-5827, 602-277-KTAR. You can also text us at 411923. We'll see if we can help you out there as well. And during the week, if you want, or any time really, you can find us at bumper to bumper radiocom You can send us emails there with uh, ideas for show topics, things you might be interested in. We don't necessarily respond to those emails, but it's it's good information. A lot of times they come up on the show uh, in the future. So today on the Bumper to Bumper Roadmap, <clears throat> we'll be talking about the emails, open phones, and texts as always. And do you need a new spark plug in your car? And this comes up. Does my car even have spark plugs anymore? Oh, they still have them unless you drive a Tesla. You got one. Well, you know, a lot of that's a common question, though, Dave. Do I have spark plugs? I know. They have not really changed since the Model T times. I mean, the materials have changed a little bit, but spark plugs are still used to ignite the fuel. I think Robert Bosch is spinning in his grave right now if you say a spark plug hasn't changed much (laughs) since the Model (laughs) T, Dave. Come on. (laughs) No, really, it hasn't changed. It still looks the same. It's got a white section. It's got a metal section. (laughs) A white section. (laughs) (laughs) So a spark plug is something everybody can relate to, but the reason this show topic comes up today, we talked about it almost exactly a year ago, because this, this keeps happening. Once in a while, we get a car that comes in, and this one of the spark plugs has literally blown out of the cylinder head. And, they, you know, they come to me because they think they need a transmission when, in fact, they just had a spark plug that blew out of the cylinder head. And I know, and they've got to come I mean, When they do that, the thing is making noise. Once in a while, I'll hear a car driving down the road. <laughs> with I'm like, I like pop, the spark pop, pop, plug pop, pop. blew out of that, you know? I mean, it, it sounds like a horrible exhaust leak, except it's rhythmic and it's, you know, boom, boom every time the... The pistons coming around, but yeah, they they come out. Um, you know, they'll it, they'll come out from if people. I mean, there's certain cars like Ford trucks or this particular Triton Ford engine uh, has problems with spark plugs. But spark plugs cause there's a ton of other symptoms where you think you're getting this. I mean, it's I guess it's like heartburn. You know, how many times people go to the hospital and they're having a heart attack and they just need some Tums, right? <laughs> exactly. But, but, well, uh, my chest hurts. Well, it's either a heart attack or it's indigestion, one or the other. <laughs> but the thing with the thing with spark plugs, and I mean, they are they haven't changed a bunch. Right. But I mean, we're always talking on the show about how the rules have changed and the way you used to do it. We used to change spark plugs every thirty thousand miles, and maybe in or even less at or times, fifteen thousand yeah. miles at some point. And now they, you know, the materials have changed. Ignition systems have gotten a lot more efficient the way they work, and they're they're better controlled. And so what what ends up happening is we can get a spark plug to go 100,000 miles, whereas you know it used to be 15 or 30,000 miles. Well, the problem that creates new problems. A, a, you know, some cars still need them every 30. They're still on the road. They're True. still making them. There's cars rolling off the lot today that need spark plugs at 30,000 miles. But then there's cars that need spark plugs at 100,000 miles, but I think, from my experience, 100,000 miles is way too long to run a spark plug because of the other problems that come up. In other words, as the spark plug is deteriorating, the ignition system is compensating, and the other pieces, the coils in particular, are working harder to do the same job, and you end up taking out coils because we didn't want to replace spark plugs. Well, as the spark plug wears, we we have a nice gap in the spark plug. We have a ground, which is grounded through the engine, and we have the the center electrode, which is hooked up to the ignition coil and maybe attached with a wire, but we're even getting away from having spark plug wires and have had those gone away in a lot of cases for a long time. But the whole idea, we've got to have compression, we've got to have fuel, and we've got to have a spark to ignite this mixture to make the power out of your engine, to make that internal combustion engine, um, you know, combust. So we, we run the spark or the electricity, the current, down the center of the spark plug. It, it, there's a nice gap between the ground. You get this big burst of lightning in your in your spark plug. I mean, picture the, one of these nice bolts of lightning. That's what's really happening in a micro 
level inside the, inside the spark plug there, and we need this big fat gap to burn, to have a nice big spark across there to burn that ignition and air mixture. And over time, what happens is the, the metal or the electrode, which could be copper, could be iridium, palladium, uh, polonium a, carbide yeah, even. Polonium carbide. I mean, it could be a number of different metals, but that gap widens. And as that gap widens, it's there has to be a higher current or, or more lightning, more electricity to jump that gap. And at some time, we're talking thousands of inches here. And as that gap gets wider, like you were saying, Dave, now that puts you now you have a higher current flow going through the spark plug wire. You've got the ignition coil working harder, and and that's probably more in extreme cases. But there's the other things, like for example, in the Ford product, they don't uh, want to come out if you leave them in there. Yeah, too long. they've been in there too long. Or you start to get these little misfires. And you're right; the com- the computer systems are are fantastic on these cars. They can compensate. Uh, for all kinds of denigration in the fuel system or the ignition system. And, denigration. And, uh, <laughs> all, three syllables, Dave. That's a big one for you. Uh, uh, but, but the computer can make up for this. But it can't make up for when the tip of that spark plug gets carbon put on it, a carbon deposit that wipes out the threads, and now you've got to fix that. But changing them out, too... You said much hasn't changed. You know, you used to buy a spark plug for thirty nine cents or oh yeah, the price cents. certainly has They're changed. They're twenty five bucks now in some cases, and, and you don't want to take a chance if you're going to do that at home. Great, that's that's one of the sometimes easy repairs. You got a four cylinder Honda or something. Yeah, come on, that that's easy. But if you're just you know a caveman and you're at home just cranking on the spark plug, I mean, they very little torque is required. You you can damage them under torquing them. You can damage them over torquing them. Well, if we drop oh. one, if the shop we throw it away it goes in the garbage we get another one because yeah. they're, they're they're and they're sensitive so but that's one of the that's one of the things where that's one of the repairs where okay so the recommendation is to change the spark plugs at a hundred thousand miles well i got a car that comes to me in the shop with a problem at seventy five thousand miles and it's it's because the spark plug is bad mm-hmm. so anytime i see a failure before the recommended service interval i know the factory missed it when they came up to those recommendations on when it should be changed and that's what's happening so i'm, I'm working on this ford here and i'm doing i got a bad spark plug at eighty thousand miles and the recommendation is to a hundred thousand miles well apparently the recommendation is wrong in my mind you know, I see that with, like, transmission service. Sometimes they see them fail before their first recommended service. Well, that's why it's called experience. And, and you know, in the shops, like my shop, your shop, Dave, many of the other bumper-to-bumper radio shops, it's a matter of having that experience and be able to make the recommendation. I mean, the the laboratory or the GM, I mean, they, they do all kinds of testing and driving, and they've come up with this stuff. And you hear us talk about the marketing department is sometimes mm. not in touch with the reality department. But you know when the Chevrolet started coming out with the, you know the Tahoes and Suburbans with the hundred thousand mile spark plugs, and now you get, now all of a sudden throw towing into the mix. Someone's got yeah. a big travel trailer, they've got the boat. Now what are we doing? We are we are we're working the system. We're taxing it even yeah. more and more and harder. So we see those people that are towing, people heavy loads. We see those failures at eighty thousand miles. Right. So we make the recommendations again to shorten those those intervals, and maybe we're going to talk about. Do an engine cleaning or carbon cleaning. Or there's so many different things that can affect the spark plug. Yeah, and, and it's one of those things where sometimes I see people, you know, they purchase a half-ton truck, and they're doing a three-quarter ton, tron, <laughs> three-quarter ton truck's job. You know, yeah. I see that happen. And I see some people that got a three-quarter ton truck, and all they really need is a little little half-ton little thing, you know, miniature pickup. So, and and yeah. so that comes into account. And you got to know that. You know, it's like I drive my car nothing but hard. You know, it's either full <laughs> throttle and full brakes. And you know what? Because of that, I use synthetic oil. Right. And I just – Better I just, brake pads. And better. better brake pads. I mean, I know I abuse the, you know, the snot out of the thing. But you know what? You might as well. I know mechanics if it breaks. Right. And spark plug change intervals. I mean, jump, you know, get your owner's manual out if you think. A lot of cars nowadays are, are 80,000 miles, but you get weird ones. You've got uh, the Volkswagens and Audi, sometimes they're 40,000. You've got a, you know, sometimes I've even seen them at like 45,000 on some Volvo or something like that. There's, there's weird intervals. And then there's other parts now. There's a lot of these spark plugs are so hard to get to. You know, we don't have spark plug wires anymore, but we have spark plug wire boots still on the, you know, attached to the ignition yeah, coil. change those out. And they have about the same lifespan as a spark plug does. Well, Matt, I can't help but think as it's getting warmer out, and I know that summer's just cooking around the corner, and I think about batteries in the cars. 
because now's a good time to buy a battery now versus in June. Guess what? Those brand new spark plugs aren't going to work if there's no battery to start the car, right? That's true. Well, you know, batteries on average last, you know, maybe 30 months. I don't know if I'm – that's probably probably a good estimate there. So if you're thinking, hey, i got an older battery in my car, and it's been in there for two and a half years, and I don't want to wait till July or May when I'm ready to go to graduation. I'm all dressed up. I'm going to go see my son's graduation, and i got a dead battery. Uh, I'm thinking now is a good time to put a new battery in the car. Head on down to your interstate dealer and pick up an interstate battery, uh, nationwide brand, Coast to coast, great warranty. You can find them at the Bumper to Bumper Radio shops at bumper to bumper radio.com or interstatebatteries.com. So if you have a question about spark plugs, anything to do with your car, give us a call at 602-277-5867, 602-277-KTAR. We will be right back. Well, we're not going to be right back. We're going to stay right here for a second, Dave, it looks like. So uh, we're... I don't know if we've got any text messages coming up or Bree. I'm not. We've reading. got a caller on line one, guys. Let's oh. go ahead and take him. Let's do that. Okay. Let's David and Chandler on a 2004 F250 diesel. Now he doesn't have spark plugs, Matt. I'm pretty sure. <laughs> one of the few guys that's going to call the show that doesn't have spark plugs. David, you're up. Hey guys, how's it going? Fantastic. Good. Yeah, this is something, you know, I bought this truck a couple of years ago, and it had a, it had about 100,000 miles on it. Looks and drives like brand new up until just about a couple of months ago. And this it started with this intermittent thing. Like, I thought maybe I wasn't paying attention and didn't, didn't let the glow plugs warm up long enough before I started it or something. But when I start it, it's just, it does it like once a month probably where I try to, you know, I turn it on, let the glow plugs warm up. I turn it over. It sounds like it starts, but it's running real rough. So it seems like it's not starting all the cylinders, like like only five of them are firing or something. So it runs really rough, and if I put it in gear, you know, you push on the gas, it doesn't seem to have any effect. It won't, it won't um, drive. It just kind of sits there. And then in most cases, I just shut it off and wait a little while, 15, 20 minutes, go back and start it up, and then it just runs like a champ. And then from that point forward, I mean, I can take it on trips and and haul stuff and do all kinds of stuff. It runs fine. But last night I was getting ready to take my grandson over to Sportsman's Warehouse to buy some stuff to take him out shooting for his birthday and didn't get out of the driveway. And now it's it seems to be um, like it's gotten worse. And so I just don't want it to be one of these things where I take it to shop after shop after shop, well, and they're guessing and guessing and guessing, and I'm buying parts and buying parts and just getting nowhere. So well, you're in Chandler, which is which is really fortunate. The guys at Automotive Diagnostic Specialties, they're right there in Chandler, and you know go see Mason, you know over there, and he's so good at these Dodge, I mean these Ford uh, diesels. I mean it's I don't. If you're dealing with the right technician, I don't think you're going to be in a situation where you're going to be shop to shop to shop and, and throwing parts at it, that type of thing. But it, it it does sound intermittent. I mean, if it's only happening once every two, once every three weeks, I mean, that makes it a little tougher to find. But I bet you there's going to be some sort of pattern failures that they're going to be able to look at and say, okay, you know, we've seen this before. We've run into it. So it, it, it may not be as hard as we think it is to uh, to address that. Yeah, I mean that that's something you don't have to and what he says he I don't want to be I exactly what he said he didn't want to do. I don't want to go from shop to shop. I don't want to and I don't want to be guessing with parts. You go to ADS, that's not going to happen. Mm-mm. They're a, also a Bosch Diesel Service Center. Uh they've got the tools, they've got the equipment and the best off, they've got the experience to fix that truck. You can have all the tools and all the equipment you want, but if you don't have the experience to get the job done, it may not turn out so well. Yeah, definitely. You know what I mean? So, you know, speaking of of, uh, of that, you know, worrying about jumping from shop to shop to shop and stuff like that, I get Google alerts. I have a little email that comes up, and, and I and, uh, get all these articles, and I see this headline, and it says, you know, it's talking about auto repair ripoff, you know, and, and people are concerned about, you know, how there's one price, and they go to another place and get a second opinion. So I, that was just what I could read. So I click on the... I click on the link, I open it up, and I start reading the article, 
And, and, it, and of all places, it's, it's in the Kuwaiti Times. Oh, yeah. So even in Kuwait, they're talking about, you know, they don't know what to do. They've got who knows what they're probably driving very expensive Mercedes, you know, the and everything over there. But but they uh, there's still this, this. It's the I guess it's a common theme. It, it's not in Arizona. It's not in the United States. It's everywhere. It's it's the service industry. I guess right. right? I it's, mean, it's a it's a black box. No one really knows. I mean, all I know is my car's broken. I know some light turned on, and sometimes when I call people up on the phone, I think this is what they hear: want 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 seven hundred and fifty dollars. Right, <laughs> that's, that's pretty much what they hear. And I'm I'm doing my best to try and convey: hey, this is what's wrong with your car. This is what we need to do to fix it, and this is how long it's going to take. And and they hear want 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 seven hundred and fifty dollars. <laughs> Well, but then there's this disparity, you know, that uh, the the article was saying, I wish I had pulled it up, but the article was saying, and it's the same thing. It's the same thing we have happen in our shops. You have one, the woman was saying, oh, I needed a, they, I was at the one shop, and, and they call them the workshop or whatever over there, and, and they said I need a new engine. So on the advice of my friend, I took it to his mechanic, and I didn't need a new engine. I mean, we had a car towed in us. It was at the Ford dealership. They told me it needed a new engine. Fairly new car. Spark plug blew out. Just out of warranty. No, the fuel injector shorted out. The still the engine was seized, but it was hydraulically seized. We took the spark plugs out. Cleared out the fuel. Got the fuel out of the system, cleaned it up, fixed the fuel injector, started the car. You know, they spent twelve or fifteen hundred dollars having us fix it. Ford was, you know, getting ready to install eight or ten thousand dollars for a motor. Nine thousand dollar engine. Now that car belonged to Uncle Sam, so maybe they were figured it was a slam dunk. But well, that's a I guess problem. It happens. And my whole point is. That's why we're here, and that's why we do what we do every Saturday and and have our shops and and, and have the, a thing like Bumper to Bumper Radio to help you, you know, yeah. with your cars and, and answer these questions and take some of the fear away. So anyway, the uh, – <laughs> Got to keep this thing going, Dave. That's we right. Have, we don't have any commercials. We do have calls, though. If you, I mean, plenty of open lines, 602 277 Five eight two seven. It's six zero two two seven seven K T A R. We are of course texting at four one one nine two three. As long as you're not driving, you can do that. At least at least at a red light, and we will talk about uh, whatever whatever it is you're you're texting about. Well, I think I think one of the things that creates anxiety for people when it when it's car there's so much you know well intentioned advice that just drives people crazy. So someone will call and, or bring their car in, and we diagnose it, figure out what's wrong. We call them up, and then they don't know what to do. And so they call a friend who doesn't really know anything but throws out a little advice. And then they call another friend who doesn't know anything but throws out a little advice. So they have all this well-intentioned advice that just makes their head spin, you know. <laughs> and, <laughs> my, my daughter was making cookies the other night, and she clearly didn't follow the recipe. I looked in the oven. I was really looking forward to some of these chocolate chip cookies. Did it I, smell good before they were done? It smelled good, and they told me how good the cookie dough tasted that they made. But but I so I go I go take a peek in the oven because I'm impatient and, and uh, hungry. <laughs> and one, one of those cookies, and it's just this blob <laughs> in the oven. Just I made some just, cookies like that when I was younger. Just this blob. But my point is, can you imagine make, fixing a car or making food? Preparing a dish or baking something the way that sometimes people go about fixing their car. Call one friend. Hey, what do you use in your chocolate chip cookies? I'll use that, Graham. Call another friend. Then you put together this recipe. Imagine the disaster you have on your in your oven. You know, oh, I had yeah. some of that. And that's the same disaster you have uh, with your car. Well-intentioned advice, but you, you couple that together, a couple bad bits of it, and boy, that thing can go haywire in a hurry, right? I get a, I get a Volkswagen in my shop that needs a new transmission, so I called the guy. I said, here's a, here's the deal. You need to rebuild your transmission. It's going to be X amount of dollars. He says, you know what, Dave? It's one of those diesels. The thing's going to be around for a long time, and uh, go ahead and fix it. So we start fixing it. We get the transmission out, and we're taking it apart. And he stops by, and he says, hey, I was talking to my brother-in-law. And he says that we can convert this thing to a manual transmission. <laughs> I guess you you can. You do can anything. do anything you want. Yeah, and like that. That's true. We could do that. Now we just have to put a pedal assembly in it to get a clutch pedal. We'd have to change out the subframe, you know, and we'd have to go with a different mount setup. We'd have to change out the computer, and you know, your your three thousand dollar transmission just shot up to seven thousand dollars. Would you still lo- like to do that? In uh, it's just not. 
that's the kind of the kind of you know. So he's like, well, should we be converting this to a manual? And I think it just it just threw some confusion in the whole situation. So. Well, perfect. Well, if you're sitting on hold, we're going to start screening some calls. And if you want to get in on the show, it's 602-277-5827. You're listening to Matt and Dave, your KTAR car guys. There's nothing more important than family. Hi, Kurt Rock for Kurt's Auto Repair. Family owned and operated and bumper to bumper radio preferred. We've been taking care of Valley families and their auto care needs with a perfect better business record for over 27 years. Come experience the difference our ASC Master Techs can make for you and your family at Kurt's Auto Repair. Just east of I-17 at 22nd Avenue and Bell Road or online at mycarhurts.com. Gas or diesel, foreign or domestic. If your car hurts, take it to Kurt. Trust. It's hard to earn and sometimes even harder to find. If you live or work in downtown Phoenix, Matt Allen's Virginia Auto Service is celebrating over 20 years of award-winning service at the corner of 7th Street and Virginia. Recognized as one of the best service shops in the country, their customers have come to trust Virginia Auto Service for its A-plus rating by the BBB, two-year 24,000-mile warranties, and free transportation to and from your home or office. 20-plus years of earning your trust. Virginia Auto Service. They're serious about service. Here's what Carrie from Tempe had to say about her experience with Good Works Auto Repair. As soon as you realize, I need to get some work done on my car, I'm sure the thought occurs to you that you're about to get taken for a ride. I used to share the same sentiment and wondered if the shop was going to make something up and have me spending hundreds of dollars instead of 30 I was planning on for a simple oil change. This is one of the reasons I will only go to Good Works Auto Repair. Because I trust them. Putting trust in an auto shop didn't come easily. It's been built over several visits with them doing exactly what was needed, not coercing me into unnecessary work. Ask them for an oil change and a safety inspection, they do just that. No baloney, list of filters, belts, and whatchamacallits that need replacing on my new car. Thank you, Goodworks Auto Repair, for being there for me when I need you. Appreciate the kind words. It's always a pleasure. Glenn Hayward here. Come experience what award-winning auto service should be. Goodworks Auto Repair in Tempe, or visit us at goodworksautorepair.com. It sounds like they've just had the accurate automotive experience. We're family-owned and operated and have served the Mesa, Tempe, Gilbert communities for over 22 years. We focus on building long-lasting relationships, and oh yeah, listening to you, so that we can understand, meet, and exceed your expectations. One location, 14 bays, 88 years of automotive expertise, and a passionate commitment to customer service and excellence. My name is Lee Weatherby, and I approve this message because it's true. We love what we do, and we want to do it for you. Accurate Automotive, the home of friends serving friends. Hi, I'm Kurt Morgan, owner of Shadow Mountain Auto Service in Phoenix. I'm also a college automotive instructor, and I've been a technician for over 30 years. In that time, I've seen all kinds of games and gimmicks in the auto repair business, the worst of which seems to be associated with transmissions. I think it's because, to most, including technicians, the inside of a transmission is a mystery. So when one of our valued customers has a transmission problem, we send them straight to Tri-City Transmission. No games, no gimmicks. That's Tri-City Transmission. Come out and enjoy a family experience like no other as the greatest women golfers in the world return to Phoenix for the JTBC Founders Cup, March 15th to the 20th. Support local charities like the LPGA USGA Girls Golf of Phoenix while watching the best of the best battle it out for the Founders Cup title. Tickets can be purchased online at lpgafounderscup.com. The JTBC Founders Cup. Swing by. We'll save you a seat. KTAR News, on air, 92.3 FM, online at KTAR.com, and on every device with the KTAR app, Arizona's breaking news and traffic, now. It's 1130, I'm Paul Eihander, here's our top story, Arizona votes, the race for the White House running through the valley this weekend, let's go to Fountain Hills where KTAR's Mike Sackley is standing by, he joins us with a Donald Trump campaign stop there, and Mike, media reporting here, 10,000 in attendance, what's your best guess? Yeah, I would say that's about right, Paul. There's only 1,500 in this little small space right in front of where the media is gathered. But, uh, yeah, I'd say right around 8,500 or so are probably on the berm a few hundred feet away. They're going to have a decent view, and they'll be able to hear Donald Trump speak. But, uh, yeah, there's just not enough space for every get in past security still awaiting the republican front runner now trump had an event earlier today in downtown phoenix so that might be part of what's causing the later rival but now paul get hot out here both people 
and uh, what a very music wise there is uh, folks uh, some music on the four drum kits there was some opera a little while ago I said Elton John probably been a big one so far as far as we've heard but we're hoping to see from here uh, in the next 30 minutes or so live in Fat Hills Mike Sackley KTAR News and we apologize for some of the technical difficulties from Mike Sackley's uh, live shot there. Obviously, a lot of people uh, using uh, Wi-Fi cell phones, which is how we transmit uh, some of our field reports as well. Well, protesters tied up traffic near the rally for hours this morning. Supporters of human rights group Puente, Arizona, using vehicles, banners, and then eventually themselves to block Shea Boulevard, as well as State Route 87. The group claiming deputies have arrested three people. Bernie Sanders will hold a rally at the Arizona State Fairgrounds tonight in Phoenix. He's taken a tour of the border near Agalas. He is speaking with reporters now there. President Bill Clinton stumps for his wife Hillary Clinton tomorrow in Arizona. He'll be in Tucson early tomorrow afternoon. A rally in Phoenix scheduled for 530 at Central High School. Two people dead after a wrong way crash west of Tucson this morning. I-10 reopening after about a three-hour closure. Another close call between a drone and a jetliner, this time at Los Angeles International Airport. A drone coming within 200 feet of hitting a Lufthansa jet. The jet on approach for on a flight from Frankfurt, Germany. And more high-paying jobs are coming to the Valley. Over the next five years, more than 150 full-time high-wage gigs. This after Governor Ducey and Orbital ATK announced a massive expansion project that will also add 60,000 square feet to the Aerospace and Defense Technologies facility in Gilbert. Orbital ATK has been developing satellites in the East Valley for more than a quarter century. Jeremy Foster, KTAR News. Now let's get a check on traffic with uh, Mike Daniels. RMEGold.com Traffic Center. Day Boulevard has been open quite late. Definitely watch for pedestrians in these areas. In surprise, we have that record bell in Litchfield. Another crash at Indian School Road in 28th Street to watch out for. And a wreck at 135th Avenue and Stardust Boulevard. I'm Mike Daniels, KTAR News. Weather forecast for the valley, calling for the sunshine today, 89. Tonight, clear sky, 57. Tomorrow, more sun, high of 89, and a warm-up Monday before we cool down midweek. Right now, in Phoenix, we have 80 degrees. Weather's brought to you by Howard Air. I'm Paul Leihander, KTAR News. Hi, Lisa Henry with Russ Lyon Sotheby's International Realty. Have you been thinking maybe the time is right to move, but you're not sure if you have enough equity in your home or if it really is a good time? Well, home values have increased significantly over the past few years, and interest rates are still historically low. For how long? No one knows. But for every 1% increase in the interest rate, the result is about a 10% loss in purchasing power. So it might be a really great time to sell your home and either upsize or downsize to a new home while the interest rates are still low. Contact me via my website at lisareneehenry.com or direct at 480-330-9530 for a no-obligation market valuation on your home and to hear about our global online marketing plan designed to sell your home quickly for top dollar. Again, that's lisareneehenry.com, 480-330-9530. Come experience the difference a truly customer-focused real estate agent can make. Trust. It's hard to earn and sometimes even harder to find. If you live or work in downtown Phoenix, Matt Allen's Virginia Auto Service is celebrating over 20 years of award-winning service at the corner of 7th Street and Virginia. Recognized as one of the best service shops in the country, their customers have come to trust Virginia Auto Service for its A-plus rating by the BBB, two-year, 24,000-mile warranties, and free transportation to and from your home or office. 20-plus years of earning your trust. Virginia Auto Service. They're serious about service. you trust here in the valley to repair your ride this is bumper to bumper radio ktar news on 92.3 fm well welcome back to bumper to bumper radio i'm dave riccio here along with matt allen and we're here to help you with your car all you got to do is give us a call at 602-277-5827 602-277-ktar Anything about your car. Spark plugs it happen to be oh. the topic of today, <clears throat> and people wonder, do you still have spark plugs? When should I get spark plugs? You can always reference your owner's manual. If you've got a shop, you've got a relationship with them, call, ask. It's, it's something that shouldn't sound foreign to you after hearing what we had to say today. No, it is funny, though. People, I mean, I think, I guess we think it's 
funny or common sense, but it's not. Does my car have spark plugs? Unless you're driving a diesel, uh, you do. You've got spark plugs. They need periodic maintenance. We're going to have you follow your owner's manual as a general guideline. But your shop that you're going to, your mechanic that you've been uh, going to for years, hopefully, or the one that you are going to now start patronizing on a regular basis so you're not that orphan out there uh, in auto repair land, they're going to give you advice on when you should change those spark plugs. And You know, Dave, I hear people all the time, I don't know what you think. I know what your opinion is about transmission fluids, but... You know, you see the advertisements for the 99-cent spark plugs. Clearly, that doesn't cover everything because, you know, some of these spark plugs are $20, $30 now. Um, I like to put back in the car what came out of it. Some people mm. say, I only use Champions. And some people say, I ah, auto lights are the best for everything. Oh, yeah. You we- know, but, but I like to put in... What I take out, what was the original supplier of that spark plug, and, you're, and you would be surprised on what we see come out of some of these these cars, too. I mean, you see a Champion spark plug coming out of a Volvo now. You see an NGK spark plug coming out of a German car, when now it's crazy. That should only be in a Honda, right? Have you ever run into weird diagnostic problems where somebody used some other spark plug? And other than what the factory had, you know, you're, you're checking the car out, you're doing everything, you pull out the plugs, they look fine, you know, but then you're like... These didn't come originally with this brand of spark plug in there. Change the spark plugs and all the problems go away. <clears throat> yeah. Remember the split fires? <laughs> oh, oh, man. God. That tune you up gets you some more horsepower. we got to get to Troy in Phoenix on a 2007 Nissan Titan. Looks like maybe a rack and pinion question. How can we help you, Troy? You're on Bumper to Bumper Radio. Hey, how you doing, guys? Fantastic. Uh, question for you. Uh, rack and pinion is doing a slow leak. Uh, I know it needs to be replaced eventually. I've been going around the valley, and it's quite expensive, but I like doing my own automotive repair, but I'm kind of not very familiar with some parts of it. Now, is there a place in town where maybe I can help out, or maybe I can do uh, some learning, or they let you in the garage and do a can or watch, uh, do you know, or, or maybe they can do like a, a discount where I help out? And, and we usually help. charge more when the customer it's, helps or watches. It's true. <laughs> That is true. I, I know what you're saying, uh, you know, as, as far as that goes, but I don't really know. I know some shops have popped up, co- kind of come and gone, that have done things like that, where you can literally go in and rent a hoist, and uh, they got tools there for you to use and instructions there for you to use, and it, it's a cool concept, uh, but it, it, it doesn't economically make sense a lot of times for the shops, so it doesn't it doesn't really pan out, and they're not able to stick around it. But they have they well, have, they had those. That was like that rent a hoist type of deal, or right. or, or you know shop rental co op. I mean, you know, if you're in the military, you maybe go out to the Air Force Base or something. They have those the mechanic shops on on the PX out there on the on the base. But yeah, not. Yeah, and a rack and pinion something where you know the vehicle's probably gonna need alignment when you're all you know when it's all done and and. Uh, but it, but it, but yeah, it's not one of those things where that's necessarily gonna. You gonna know, happen. it's funny. My first job, or one of my first jobs, when we when I was a kid, we moved from Phoenix here when I was like 16 back east. And I and I liked Volkswagens. I wanted a job, and I called this Volkswagen shop, and I said, Hey, no, I'd like to. Oh no, we're not hiring anybody. I said, Can I just come down and work? And I just <laughs> showed up there the next day. I'm like, yeah, I talked to you on the phone. I don't need a paycheck. I just want to work. <laughs> and they're just like, okay. So I said, well, they had a pile of engines or something. I started taking them apart. It was funny. I just visited that guy's shop uh, in the fall. Really? Yeah, back when I was, you know, he's in business and, and doing great. And it was good to see him and talk. But it was funny. I'm like, remember me? He's like, oh, yeah. You know. <laughs> You're the guy that just showed up I, here. Yeah, I was like 16. I didn't have any friends at the time and new in town. Just, Not much I has just, changed. Just started working, right? <laughs> Still I, uh, I only friends. need one or two. <laughs> I got you, Dave. What else do I need? Well, Come thanks on. for the call, Troy. 602-277-5827. Let's go with Kevin in Peoria on a 2004 Chevy Duramax. You know, we spark plugs with a conversation today, and all we've had is diesel phone calls. What's going <laughs> <I know>. on? <laughs> How can we help you, Kevin? You're on Bumper to Bumper Radio. Uh, my question is on a dash light slash trailer brake issue. Uh, I've got an issue with my dash lights dimming and going out while I'm driving. I'm 90% sure it's in the, the actual switch or dimmer switch because you can shake the switch a little bit and it, uh, the lights come back on. But I, the real question is, I've had issues with the trailer brakes locking up, and the last time I pulled my trailer, it seemed like when the dash lights went out, that's when the trailer brakes would lock up, and the green light on my trailer controller would go red. Hmm. Could they be connected? 
I wouldn't be an issue. I wouldn't normally think so. I think your 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 jiggle test on the on the dimmer switch, you know, makes sense. You may very well have a dimmer switch going bad. Sometimes when people put aftermarket accessories in, they kind of go rob power from places they shouldn't go rob power from. from. That's and what that's what I'm thinking on the trailer brake. I think somebody went and tied into your uh, your dimmers. Well, you know. and I'm thinking not so much on the power side, Dave. I'm thinking on the ground side. The switch works okay uh-huh. occasionally. You know, the headlights work. You shake that thing. Maybe it's somehow you know the switch though. The ground isn't really going to be right there. But you throw in this aftermarket trailer brake, but. On the same token, that 2004 Duramax, I had one of those. The trailer brake, hopefully, if you got the good one, it plugs right in. So there aren't any real, you're not using any splices or clips or, or any other uh, outside sources for ground. But I'm with you. I'm thinking somebody, there might, they might, there normally wouldn't be related necessarily. Uh, but if you've got an aftermarket controller that is not a plug and play, if you will, I'd be looking pretty hard at that. Otherwise, a wiring diagram. You've got to have the road map. And, but, again, back to the battery. Right, Start right there. Make sure it's got good, tight connections. Thanks for the call. 602-277-5827. We're going to go with, looks like, Renee in Goodyear, 2011 VW Jetta. And spark plug question, how can we help you, Renee? Hey, guys. This uh Always enjoy listening to you guys. I have a, like you say, a Jetta. Uh, it recommends um, the spark plugs, I believe, to be changed every 40,000. And they're, as you have mentioned, uh, top of the line, Bosch. These are no cheap spark plugs. Um, what's your take on it? Um, I have gone by uh, by the book and changed them, but I um, I wonder if I should change them again, uh, you know, um, re, uh, now or should I wait? Well, how many, how many miles are in the car right now, Renee? 60,000. 60,000. So the interval on that, like you said, like I believe, is 40,000. So there would be no reason. If you changed them at 40,000, you know, there, there's really no reason to uh, to change them now. Just, uh, you know, wait and go till the, uh, to the, uh, the 80,000 miles to the next interval. And the other thing you need to make sure that you're doing when you when anybody that's changing out the spark plugs, you want to have a good look at the ignition coil boots. You know, there's no spark plug wires on a lot of cars. Now you have just the ignition coil. And then when you pull that off, there's going to be a nice rubber or silicone boot. You want to make sure that's clean, doesn't have any corrosion on it. Look down the side. If you look at the side of the spark plug and you see black carbon tracking marks, that's the electricity, the spark that should be going into the spark plug. It's being lazy. It's going down the outside. It's tracking down the boot. It's grounding to the top of the spark plug or the or the cylinder head. So you want to make sure those are clean and use some dielectric grease to uh, put inside the spark plug boot to keep that sealed and dried. But otherwise, just go. The, I would go the, the mileage interval on yeah, those. Yeah, I think 40,000 miles every 40 is, you know, stick with that. So thanks for the call. We're going to go with Reed and Chandler on a 2007 Hyundai Santa Fe. How can we help you, Reed? You're on Bumper to Bumper Radio. Um, on my Hyundai, it's got 220,000 miles, and I've never changed the spark plugs. If I change them now, am I going to do something else, or should I not worry about it? car runs great. There's never been a problem at all. Well, you know, you, you, you never can tell because... They, they need to be changed. I mean, <laughs> I can't imagine they've never been changed. Maybe you're the second owner of the car. No. Uh, wow. The original owner never been changed. Never been changed. You're well, living right, Reed, because you must be opening the doors for little ladies and doing all the things you should be doing to keep those spark plugs going that long. Yeah, I mean, uh, wow, 200 some odd thousand. Well, I, there's that's not a car that's problematic for for spark plug, uh, issues. For spark plug issues. You know, sometimes when we go to take them out, we actually give them a tiny, tiny turn to the right. Just, And I'm not talking a quarter turn or even an eighth turn. Just a little bit to tighten them, break them free, back them off real slow. If you feel any resistance, stop. Or maybe go back tight again, quarter, you know, whatever, in, out, in, out, and then just take them slowly, back them out, and they'll probably be fine. The problems with the spark plugs breaking off in the cylinder heads after long mileage was with the Fords. They had very little. I mean, they had like three or four threads, and part of that thread went down into the combustion chamber and would get carbon on it. That Hyundai, that's got that, uh, you know, the 12-millimeter or 14-millimeter thread, I think, on the spark plug. That's long. It's got like a half inch of threads on it. So I doubt that you would have any problem taking those out. And if I was replacing the spark plugs in a Hyundai, I would use NGK spark plugs. For sure. 
Well, when we come back, we're taking more phone calls at 602-277-5827. You're listening to Matt and Dave, your KTR Car Guys, on Bumper to Bumper Radio. Are you looking for a refreshing change in customer service? I'm Lee Weatherby from Accurate Automotive. How about a refreshing change in your car repair relationship with honest, clear, and responsive service that looks out for your needs and not ours? For over 20 years, we've been delivering award-winning service provided by ASC certified technicians with one goal, looking out for your best interest. If it needs fixing, we'll tell you. If it doesn't, you'll know that too. I guarantee that you will not get that business-as-usual treatment at Accurate Automotive. Foreign and domestic, cars, trucks, and even fleet service, Accurate can handle your job. I invite you to come in and experience a refreshing difference in car repair and maintenance. Stop by for a free courtesy inspection, a $49 value. We feel it is well worth our investment in you because we know that good long-term relationships start early with your first walk through our doors. I'm Lee Weatherby, and I'll be there to greet you. Accurate Automotive, home of friends serving friends, just off Broadway and Ropeson in Mesa since 1992. For more information, check us out at accurateautomotiveaz.com today. Hey, friends, Jerry Colangelo here, inviting you to swing by Red's Bar and Grill at the Wigwam Golf Club for a unique dining and entertainment experience. Overlooking the arch palms and rolling greens of this historic Golden Patriot courses, Red's is a central gathering spot for West Valley sports fans. With 14 big screen TVs, there's plenty of room to watch all the games all season long. You can get in the Red's zone any day of the week for great specials, Thursday through Monday, and for happy hour from 3 to 6 p.m. daily. See you there. There's nothing more important than family. Hi, Kurt Rock for Kurt's Auto Repair. Family owned and operated and bumper to bumper radio preferred. We've been taking care of Valley families and their auto care needs with a perfect better business record for over 27 years. Come experience the difference our ASC Master Techs can make for you and your family at Kurt's Auto Repair. Just east of I-17 at 22nd Avenue and Bell Road or online at mycarhurts.com. Gas or diesel, foreign or domestic. If your car hurts, take it to Kurt's. This is Bumper. Bumper to Bumper Radio, KTAR News on 92.3 FM. <laughs> Welcome back to Bumper to Bumper Radio. We've got Teresa and Joan, and time for a couple more calls at 602-277-5827. And up first this segment, Matt, we're going to go with Teresa in Phoenix. She has a Hyundai Santa Fe 2001. How can we help you, Teresa? Yeah, let me ask you. Let me explain to you my situation. Uh, I live in an apartment over here in, in Chandler. Okay, somebody broke my car, and you know they they broke the transmission, the whole system for the car. So I take the car. I made a report to the police. I take the car to the uh, repair for the damage that they do it for the transmission, and I take the car out. And then when I go to uh, go with my father to the cemetery, the car shut down, and then I started again and started. And then get, again, uh, when I go to the gas station, the car start check it out, and I say, why? When I pay $1,800 for the repair for the car. Hmm. <clears throat> what did they repair on your car? Okay, they repair the damage that they do for the transmission, uh-huh. the, whole, yeah, the, the whole transmission. Okay. So, did, did, so uh, did Teresa, did somebody actually... Uh, a little confused. Did they actually steal your car and went out and as the car was stolen, like someone was driving it? They, they... No, 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 no. I ha- I live in an apartment here in Chandler. In Chandler, here close to Arizona Avenue, uh, Hacienda. Then I, I met because they opened the, the hood. Somebody broke inside the, my car. So I go to the, the police. The police take the fingerprints and everything. Right. But the car was done already because I picked it up at the shopping again. You know, so I cannot pay twice to get the repair. You know, and when I go to the gas station and I go to uh, the cemetery with my father, it car shut down and uh, it stop, and I have to give it the kid again, the mission kid again, and I run it again, and I don't understand why. Sure. Well, Teresa, it sounds like really what what you need to do is we're gonna you need to get back to the. Um, you know, to the shop that was Did looking the at the car, and you, and if you don't have much luck with them, you might try, you know, work with the insurance company, especially if your insurance company is who told you to go, um, you know, to go to that to that shop if it was one of their preferred or PRPs or DRP direct re- repair 
provider DRPs, DRPs, or something. There's whatever the whatever acronyms in our business. There is. There's a lot of them. But, <clears throat> but this, you know, don't get frustrated with the car. You've got to stick with it. Go back to the shop. Explain to them what's happening. Um, I'm not clear still on exactly what was replaced with, you know, with the damage. Maybe some interior pieces or the transmission shifter. I, I, I'm not clear. But if it wasn't doing that before, it certainly shouldn't be doing it now. So just document. Try to work with them. And uh, if you have to, maybe get your insurance company involved. For sure. Thanks for the call, Teresa. We're going to go with Joan in Glendale on a 2007 Saturn View. How can we help you, Joan? Yes, I was wondering, It's my vehicle's coming up to 65,000 miles. What should I be looking at to have checked out at this mileage? It doesn't get driven very often. Yeah, Joan, you know, two, and it is a 2007, right? Yes. See, that's a, Dave, I mean, th that's a totally different question from a car, let's just say a 2012 car that's approaching 60,000 miles. I mean, don't you think you treat that differently, a 2007 car? Just because of age? Yeah. Yeah, I, th I would <clears throat> I would, I, I would look at it a little differently just, just based on age. You know, I mean, a lot of times we're looking at mileage intervals and, and that type of thing. Uh, but but these cars that don't get driven that much, I mean, she's not putting that many miles on the car no, every year. No, she's not, not putting any on the car. So, I mean, Dave, let's talk about some of the things that don't wear out because the car is sitting and some of the things that do. You know what I worry about is engine coolant. Right. You know, that's I think it, it gets it turns acidy mm -hmm. over time, and the pH changes, and that's that's one of those things that I would be considering taking care of would be the engine coolant. Some of these cars that don't get driven, sometimes they rot from the inside out, and it's because of things like the coolant going bad yeah. and turning bad. You know, we got a text here from a guy that just bought a Mustang GT, no service record, sixty five thousand miles on it. He says, "What what do I what do I do? Where should I start with a car? I don't know where to start with it." Hold on one and, second, Dave. I want to go back one second though. I wasn't quite done with Joan. I was Oh, <laughs> well, you're talking about a Mustang now. Joan's got a Saturn. But, Joan, you're in Glendale. One of our shops that you find on BumperToBumperRadio.com is Dave's Car Care, Dave Denman, 51st Avenue in Peoria. I would suggest going in there, make an appointment, ask for Dave or ask for Keenan. He's the guy in the front counter there. And, and talk to them because your, your situation is a little bit unique. And and that's where we don't want someone saying, oh, your car is 10 years old or 14 years old, you need to do this, or you got 60000 They need to inspect that car and tailor that service to how you use it. And that's the benefit of going to one of the small shops. So hopefully well, that I, helps, John. And then and back to this Mustang, though, I mean, it's and I think it's it's going and looking at the whole car. And right. I, I was going to get the point of the comprehensive vehicle checkout. Right. You know, go get... You know, okay, so we bought the car. We don't have the service records on the car. We don't know what's been done, what's not been done. You know, not a ton of miles. It was in the so same mileage area as, as that last phone call. But go have everything looked at, <clears throat> top to bottom, and, and see if there's anything. And someone who's been around, they're going to they're gonna look and they say, hey, look, you know, we should probably do this, this, and this, or these are the areas of concern. And even if there's nothing wrong with the car, we've established a baseline. That's really what's important it, it, is – Find out where we are. Where is where is neutral? Where are we starting from so that two, three years from now you're not wondering what you need to be doing or not doing and, and somebody can make a plan for you? Well, I'm just looking at some more of the text. we got quite a few texts today. Sorry, we're not going to be able to get to all of them. Uh, but uh, 07 Dodge Caliber with 170,000 miles on it. Lost power on the freeway. Engine light uh, came on. Internet says CVT transmission. Any thoughts? Replacement? Uh, that type of thing. And, uh, you know, CVT transmissions have really, you know, they're really, we're seeing them more and more, and there's, they're, they're different. They just work differently. But uh, I know on those calibers, you know, I mean, they had a ton of failures. Yeah. You know, I'm, I'm not a huge fan of CVT transmissions. You know, there's, there, I'm sure there's people that had great luck with them. I, I just don't see it. They seem expensive to me. Seem like they see a lot of failures, and I, I don't know if they're consumer friendly. That's just my take. The manufacturers are using them more and more because they're very fuel efficient. In other words, they keep the engine running at the ideal RPM, and uh, so fuel efficiency wise, they do really really well. I got another one here, Matt. 05 GMC Sierra. When engine is warmed up, sitting in park, engine intermittently runs rough, lopes for about five seconds, then smooths out. Any thoughts on that? Hmm. 
loped for five seconds yep. and kind of smoothed out. Uh, you know, if it's just doing it randomly out of the middle of nowhere, not really. Right. Um, I mean, something like that, you're going to, what is, we're going to kind of deduce down to what has the effect, a common connection to that can affect all cylinders, not just one cylinder, right? Right. Well, I mean, if, if this was in your shop, what would be the first things that you would be looking at to try and uh, try and narrow it down, yeah. you're just going to start looking. And that's one thing we do when we diagnose cars. We're smelling. We're looking at scanner data. data we're driving the car. How does it perform otherwise? And that kind of gives us, you know, maybe we'll pull fuel pressure on it. We're going to look at some of those values. So thank you for joining us. And... Uh, you can find out more about Bumper to Bumper Radio at bumper to bumper radio.com. If you're looking for a... Matt and I share car repair tips weekly to help you keep your car safely on the road. And a few of them are easy to do. Yep, you're right, Dave. And one of the easiest is to have a dependable battery that you can trust to get you started no matter what the conditions. Interstate batteries are what we trust at Bumper to Bumper Radio. In fact, they're what we use at our own shops for our customers. If you're like most people, your car is one of your most valuable investments. Make sure you take care of that investment with the power necessary to get you where you need to be. Interstate Batteries are America's number one replacement brand with a factory fresh guarantee, and they're easy to find at good shops everywhere. Cars or trucks, Interstate has you covered with long life and performance in our harsh desert climates with products like Megatron Plus. It carries a 30-month free replacement and a six-year performance guarantee. Interstate Batteries. No battery lasts longer. Check them out at interstatebatteries.com. Hi, I'm Scott, general manager with Whitey's Auto Repair here in South Scottsdale. We built a reputation for quality auto service and repair for over 45 years, and our customers have come to trust us for our recommendations. We value that trust, and that's why when it comes to transmissions, for the past several decades, we have been recommending Tri-City Transmission. They have yet to disappoint. I feel so strongly about it, I wouldn't go anywhere else. Why would you? Google them online today at tricitytransmission.com. Go where the pros go. Try City Transmission. I'm Dave Riccio. And I'm Matt Allen. For the best advice for your car or truck, join Dave and I, the Car Guys, on Bumper to Bumper Radio every Saturday at 11 on KTAR News 92.3. So your car won't start? Or is it making a funny noise? Let us help. If we can't get you an answer on the show, we're backed up by the most trusted auto referral network in Arizona. Drive in anxious, cruise out feeling fine with Bumper to Bumper Radio. And remember, 24-7 bumper to bumper radio.com 